CBC Color Presentation. Tonight on Telescope, meet David Steinberg, a humorist for the 70s, a star of the top U.S. talk and variety shows, his own television specials, and successful comedy concerts. David Steinberg is a rabbi's son from Winnipeg who once studied theology himself. As a performer, David is highly irreverent. To him, nothing is sacred. He angers some, but endears himself to many more. It's been a long time since Steinberg's been back to Winnipeg. I spent most of my childhood in Winnipeg, cruising up and down the Red River in, in a boat. That's what Mark Twain and I had in common. We both were drawn to the river. In Winnipeg, I'm known as Tutu Steinberg. I used to blow this horn. There comes Tutu Steinberg. I changed my name to David because I wanted to separate myself from my earlier life, and I became a performer. We're a family of seamen. My uncle was the very well-known Captain Lafitte who terrorized the coast of New Orleans. A little man inside my head that indicates to me exactly where I should be going at all times. I better go more to my left here. When I do drive the ship, I like to have the band playing near my god to the... This puts everything into perspective for me. Getting behind the wheel again on Thursday afternoon makes me appreciate the fact that I'll never have to do this again. Well, I think I'll just leave this for a while. It'll look after it soon. In truth, I'm really not on ships this often. Okay? I've just been accommodated for my trip back to Winnipeg. In there, uh, that that's the Winnipeg that I knew. In there are all the Lewickies and Kalchucks and Cutlers and Mazurskis and all the people that uh, surrounded my life when I was a kid. I always wanted more than anything else to be a basketball player. I always thought I was going to play with Willis Reed and Dave DeBusher, but I ended up playing with uh, Morley Greenberg and Benson Winnick here. But uh, there's still uh, tremendous times for me. And this place in particular is a very, very exciting time. I can remember that one day our, our bitty basketball team beat St. Paul's College which was a particular triumph because we were the YMHA Blues and, and what St. Paul's did before they came on the court is they all kneel, knelt down and crossed themselves. And I thought that for a moment, God came over to our side and, uh, and my hook was the, uh, the inspiration for it. This is my old neighborhood. I'll show you around. You said before I met you, your life it was so tame. Took you to a nightclub and the whole band knew your name. That's why I'm here. This area that we're in now is really the area that I grew up in. That was my uncle and aunt's store. I used to listen, they had a, a big radio, I remember, in the back there. And I first heard Jack Benny and Fred Allen on the radio because they could get uh, the American programs. I love that. On my house in Atlantic Street, I can never, ever remember seeing the floors or touching the real fabric of the furniture. My mother always had plastic over everything. Uh, the floors were covered with newspapers. If there wasn't a major holiday around the corner, there was always the Sabbath a few days away. 
Uh, I think the only thing that my mother didn't cover with plastic was the food and her children. I think we even had a great classic painting that no one ever saw. It was covered up. No one will ever see. On the house in Atlantic, I had a dog, a black and white dog. I called him Spotty, which was an indication of the kind of creativity that was going to burst forth in me in later years. Atlantic and that's my house and it looks well, it looks pretty much the same as I would have imagined it to. I was six years old here and uh, very very small. This is uh, now this is much smaller than I imagined it. I thought it would be much bigger. That's where I fell in a ginger ale bottle and I got this scar that I tell people occurred in the Spanish Civil War. Lilacs. I remember those. I remember those smells very well. I used to, I used to sit outside on, on the steps there, and I used to pull on the vines in my pajamas when I was four or five. And then once a robin fell down my back, and I went screaming into the house, a crocodile, a crocodile. And my mother said, well, that's ridiculous. There's no crocodile. But she saw this live, breathing thing in my back, and she fainted before she could hit me. This shed. Ah, oh, yes. This is where the Corsican brothers hid out. That's where I played the Corsican brothers, where you couldn't get me. If I was killed, I became the other Corsican brother. It even looks like my old bicycle in there that I wouldn't give to anyone. Uh, most of my family, they would pass their gifts on to someone else. I, I refuse to do that. I still don't like to share my food or anything like that. Said before I met you, your life, it was so tame. I took you to a nightclub and the whole band knew your name. That's why I'm evil. Evil hearted me. I'm evil hearted baby as a man can be. 